Hi, I have received the today's three instruments from eBay UK. The first one is an altimeter. This one, as you can see, it has seen better days. Some paint is missing here. This one is dated February 91. Second one here is a static air temperature. This is a small instrument. This one should be compliant to Eric 565. The goal is to connect some of these instruments to the Bendix and data computer. And this is another static air temperature indicator. This one is older, manufacturing date 78. This one was manufactured by Colesman Instrument Corporation. Okay, so let's start with this one, for example. Okay. Okay, so we have a servo control here. So this thing is a motor. There is a feedback potentiometer here. The gear train. Here there is a solenoid for the flag. You can see the electronic side is quite complex. And there are three boards. One here, this is an op-amp, 741, there are six transistors, here there is a PCB with some passive parts. On the other side, we have a board with three op-amps, they are the same, 741, with some passive parts, and there is another one here in between, and there is a transformer in the middle for the power supply. So maybe this board is for the power supply. The construction of that thing is complicated. Okay, so I will remove these four screws. I will see if this board can be removed. Okay, so I think it will be easy to do the reverse engineering of that board. It is a single side board. So this seems to be the power supply. We can see several filtering capacitors here. We have several diodes here. I did the complete reverse engineering of this indicator. You can see the complete schematic on the screen except the power supply. This is a classic servo control system. The error amplifier is here. The output of the servo control amplifier is connected to this power stage, which is on the power supply board. There is a filter between the output stage and the motor itself. The motor is a brush contact motor. The feedback potentiometer is on the left. There is an input resistance of 20K. The feedback potentiometer is supplied with a part of that signal, which is obviously the voltage reference input. The feedback potentiometer is connected to the non-averting input of the amplifier. The second input is connected to one pin here, pin 6 of the circular connector, which is obviously the input of that system. You can see that the low side of this potentiometer is connected to the ground through three resistors. These two resistors which are on that board here and one resistor which is the carbon 5% resistor. So this resistor is not accurate and not stable at all, but this signal is also connected to one pin of the connector. So I think that this pin permits to have a self-test of that system. In normal mode, I think that this pin is connected to the ground. And when this pin is disconnected, there is a shift of the voltage of the potentiometer. This permits to have a detection of a failure of the servo control. We can see that there is a center point on this potentiometer. So this permits to have a function close to a square root function. As this function is on the feedback, there will be a square function regarding the input here, which is proportional to the square root of the static air temperature. Therefore, the angle of the shaft here will be proportional to the static air temperature. There is also a validity test of the input voltage. The input voltage is fed to these two comparators. The Gershold voltages are of course proportional to the reference voltage. So this permits to have something which doesn't depend 
on the reference voltage because input voltage is also proportional to the voltage reference. This is done inside the data computer. If the input voltage is outside the limit, therefore there will be a high level at the output of this OR gate here. We have on the bottom of this page the flag circuit. The flag is here, this is a solenoid, there is a free wheeling diode. The flag is activated when the voltage is present on that pin, 28 volts or something like that. So this voltage comes from the air data computer. This signal indicates that the static air temperature function is valid on the air data computer. We need also that this transistor Q6 is on, therefore this transistor Q5 should be off. And this transistor is off when this signal is off, so this signal is the output of the detector of the input voltage. Okay, so this signal is at high level when the input voltage is outside the allowable limits. And there is also here another signal which is the output of the error amplifier. When this voltage is too high or too low, there will be a conduction of this diode or the other one when the voltage is negative here and positive here. When the voltage is positive, there will be a current. So this will turn on this transistor and when the voltage is too negative, uh, the emitter voltage will be below ground and this will turn on also this transistor okay, and the flag will be off. And there is also an output which indicates that everything is okay. So this signal is okay when the flag is on here okay, because there will be a current flowing through this resistor of 82 ohms and so this will turn on this transistor. In that case, Q3 is off here. So the transistor Q1 can be conductive, but for that purpose we need also that Q2 is conductive as well. So you can see that there is a linear diode here, which is connected to the base of this transistor. When the power supply voltage is above a given limit, there will be a current flowing through this linear diode. And in that case, this permits to have an output signal here. This is the first test of this static air temperature indicator. I have connected the input to this potentiometer here. The voltage reference is set to 20 volts. I have also connected the switch here between this line and the ground. This signal permits actually to test the flag error. When this point is left open, the voltage on the whipper here is above the limit here, so this permits to activate the flag. Okay. Normally this indicator should be compliant with ERINC 565. I bought in the meantime uh, the standard 565 dated February 1968. Okay, so we have the specifications here for the static air temperature. The input voltage should be proportional to the square root of the static air temperature. In Kelvin there is a factor here and this should be ratiometric regarding the voltage reference. I have calculated here the nominal voltage we should have here considering a reference voltage of 20 volts. The static temperature in degrees Celsius is here. So we can check for example the voltage here 3.994 volts we should have zero. Okay, we have one degree. We can test minus 50, for example. Uh, we should have uh, 3.61 volts. For 361, we have 51 degrees. There is a difference of 1 degree. We can test the maximum for 4.35 volts, we should have 50 degrees. Okay, it is Ah, ok. 47. The 
the minimum is achieved for a voltage of uh, 3.21 volts approximately. That's all for today. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.